So we will get started. Um, so tonight we are coming to you from our student success area. So this is an area where our life coaches are housed and um, it's kind of a fun area. Let me let somebody else in here. So this is an area where you can get help with um, any of your academic questions. You'll see your life coach for advising here. Um, so tonight you're here for psychology, which we're super glad you're here for. So just because you've attended, we're going to give you a $500 scholarship. So we'll put that onto your account. So when you arrive here on campus, that $500 will be here for you. Um, and there are more opportunities and more career choices that you can check out on Tuesday and Thursday nights. You guys may have gotten some text messages from us. Um, so anyway, any questions, though, you can put them in the chat. I'll be answering um, as we go throughout the program. Otherwise, at the end, we'll have some question and answer times as well. So we are joined tonight by the program director. Her name is Dr. Trudy holmes Kaines, and she's kind of a legend around here and um, has some really awesome things to share with us tonight. So without further ado, take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good. Yes, like to see the waving in the energy. So I'm going to share a slide with you as I'm talking about psychology a little bit. And like Missy said, then we can ask questions along the way, or we can ask questions at the end. And so here we go. All right, so I put up the title page, Become an Agent of Change, as I'm talking about psychology, because psychologists do a lot of things, but when I try to think about what one word that would encapture all of that, would encapsulate all of that, I thought about change. Um, psychologists work in different areas, but all of the areas, the goal is to help people grow, improve, develop, and so change. And so if you get into psychology, I think at some point you can become an agent of change. So I always like to start with a little quiz. So I don't want anybody to feel awkward and have to put up their hands. So I'm actually going to ask the questions and give the answers. But just to kind of get you thinking a few things and just start with some energy. So here we go. It's a true and false quiz. And the first one says, psychologists can read people's minds. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about it. And I'm already getting a no. Right. And so false, definitely false. Psychologists can't read people's minds. Nobody can read anybody else's minds. We haven't figured out how to do that yet. There are some real cool things that they do with neuro psych or neuroscience where they uh, attach um, electrodes into your brain and you can uh, type things or use it to speak, but they still can't read your mind with that. And so the next one is all psychologists are therapists. And I'm getting a, I'm getting a no already again. Great. Yes. So all psychologists are not therapists. I know a lot of people who, when I say I'm a psychologist, they think, oh, are you in private practice? And I say, I actually, I'm not a therapist. And they're like, well, then what do you do? And then I have to explain some of the things we'll talk about on uh, as I go through my presentation. And so good for you. You already are on board with that. Psychologists can subliminally influence people. Subliminal that one's a trickier one because there you can do it, but it's not really as big of a deal as sometimes people talk about, oh, they're influencing you with the movies or whatever. They no, not really. It's it's a it's a thing that can happen, but it's not a very strong or dependable, reliable thing that you can do. So the last one I've got is psychologists are involved in influencing public practices and policy. So it's kind of complicated, but yes, good. I You are right on board there, people. Yes, psychologists are doing a lot of things 
to help change the way governments, medical professionals, teachers, um, all of these different uh, areas so that they can improve the way we teach, improve the way we do therapy, do mental health, do the improve the way people um, become healthy, practice, improve their, their health behaviors, all of those different things. So the point here is that psychologists do a ton of do different things. They also don't do some things that the, the myths out there say we can't do, like reading people's minds. So we are excited to do the things we can do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about studying psychology at Union, like what we can do, what we can accomplish about, with psychology at Union. So first, I'm going to introduce you to our professors. This first professor that I'm introducing you to is Dr. Melanie Gabbert. She is a developmental psychologist, and she's also a therapist. And she teaches a lot of our psychology classes that everybody does. So like introduction to psychology, developmental psychology, social psychology, lots of people do those. And then she teaches some of the other ones that mostly psychology majors do. These are not all the classes she teaches, but that's what I fit on the page today. Some of the more exciting ones. And then the other main psychology professor, I figured you didn't need a photograph because it's me. <laughs> and so I studied educational psychology. And right now I do more of psychology that looks at cognition or learning and religion. And so I teach a class on cognitive psychology and a teach a class on psychology of religion. I really love psychology of religion. I'm reading a book right now. And my husband says, could they have come up with a more interesting name, psychology of religion? Not so exciting, but it's a really exciting field and area. And I love teaching that class. And then I teach some classes that are, you know, other people are like, oh, research, we have to do that. But I teach some classes on how to do research and help you do actually do some research. And so those are the things, not all of the things again, but the main things. And then we have some teachers, some professors who are actually um, people working in the field. We, I really like that we are able to incorporate adjunct professors who are practicing. So um, somebody who is a therapist teaching the counseling class, somebody who is an alcohol and drug counselor teaching the alcohol and drug counseling classes, somebody who's working with, um, again, mental health, teaching abnormal psychology. So we try to make sure that you get the best information from the people who are actually using the information so that you are prepared to go to the next level, where whatever that might be for you. All right, so choices. Psychology is about all these different things, which means that when you do a psychology major, you have lots of choices. So how do we prepare you to deal with these choices? And how do we prepare you for the choices? Um, one of the areas that we have just started really working on is the alcohol and drug counseling licensure. So that means that you can take all the classes that you need to take here at Union to get an alcohol and drug counselor license from the state of Nebraska. Now, we can't give you a license. Well, the, that's done at the state level, the state health and human performances. Health, health and human performance, that's good. <laughs> they, this is... The, the state, at the state level, the health department is the one who off, uh, gives the license. So, um, but each state has their own and our state reciprocates with several other states. So if you get the classes here and get our license, then you can probably also get a license in another state if you need to do that. Um, what does this do? This allows you to be a counselor for an alcohol and drug setting. So it doesn't allow you to be a general therapist, but it does allow you to work 
with people who have substance use disorders. And so that is something you can do with your bachelor's degree right off the bat. And that's great because that means that you can start in on your profession before going to a master's degree, which is usually what you need to do in order to be a therapist. Um, you can also work in human services as a caseworker or other, there are other jobs in hu human services that you can do. Um, and we have had some graduates who have decided that that's what they wanted to do. They didn't want to go on to graduate school. They wanted to start working and helping people with their undergraduate degree. So they had the preparation they needed. So some other things that you can do. So you probably already know that if you do a psychology major, you actually need to do a master's degree or another degree in order to work in most psychology areas. That's just the way it is. And um, so you kind of get ready for the long haul uh, to go first to Union College for four years and then somewhere else for two or more years. But what we try to do is that we try to help you be ready for that next stage by giving you the information. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But some of the areas that we help prepare people to go into, we have uh, counseling and therapy and school counseling and marriage and family therapy. And then there is clinical psychology or counseling psychology. Both of them are therapists at a doctorate level. So you have a little, you have a lot more training than a master's level and you can do some more things that a master's graduate wouldn't be able to do. There's school psychology, which is different, which has you giving testing and helping uh, put students in special education or helping school uh, teachers know what uh, plans are best for students, so helping to create individualized education plans, and so quite a bit of work in schools. And then there is a, there are research options, so research degrees. So some of the examples, social psychology is a research degree, um, cognitive psychology is a research degree, and there are some other areas like that. There are several actually other areas where you can do research or you can work in corporate America and um, do consulting and testing and so on. So these are all things that we know that are out there for you. And we do things to help you figure out which one of these paths you wanna go in and how to get there. So what do we do? So we have some classes where we actually start guiding you right from the beginning in setting goals. A lot of people don't know at the beginning what they want to do. And so we don't, we're not pushing you. We're kind of saying, here are the things. And we keep telling you what the options are, how to get there. And sometimes we have this conversation over and over with the same people because they're trying to sort it out. Another thing that we can do is that we can help you get a practicum so that you can go try it out. Or we can help you with job shadowing so that you can go spend a few hours and look, watch, see, is this what I want to be doing? And then move on to that. So we have classes to help you figure out your goals. And then we have classes where we help you get prepared for applying to graduate school for applying to the specific school you want, for figuring out which school you want. So we try to do all of that with you so that you don't wind up your, at your senior year figure, being like, now what, right? We want you to be ready. We want you to know exactly what you're getting into. And then we spend a lot of time with individuals. That's one of the, my actually probably favorite things to do is to work individually with the, my students when they're doing their research projects, when they're trying to figure out graduate school, when they're 
trying to sort out who am I as a psychologist. We spend a lot of time together talking about it. Dr. Gabbert also spends a lot of time with people trying to figure these things out. And it's time when we get to know you, we can support you better when we know what your ideas are and what your concerns are. And we kind of strengthen each other and get excited together about the poss possibilities that you have out there. All right. And then we help you to problem solve as much as we can. All right, so finally, I want to share with you some alumni stories. So I don't have people, uh, photographs and specific stories, but I want to tell you about some of the people who have graduated from our program and what they're doing. So my top, uh, my top point there is therapists. And that's because we have had several people who graduated, who are therapists now in different parts of the country. Um, I can think right off the top of my head, Missouri, Arizona, Nebraska, several people in Nebraska, um, Utah, all of these areas where Tennessee, where people um, are practicing as marriage and family therapists, Oregon, Every time I stop saying that, and then I come back with another one. Okay, so they're practicing as therapists in these different areas. And also, um, some of them, they're bilingual, and so they have added services that way. They're drug and alcohol counselors, um, they're, and like I said, marriage and family therapists. So pretty excited about people like those. Every so often, I'll get some of them to visit or come in on Zoom and just tell their story to inspire the people who are here. Then school counselors. I specifically, when I was writing that one down, thought of well, somebody, she graduated, I think three years ago now, and she's doing so well. Um, no, she graduated four years ago. She's been a school counselor for two years because she had two years of graduate school to become a school counselor. And then she went to work at her high school with, that she graduated from as a school counselor. And she loves it. She talks about, I've invited her to talk to students about what she does. And she just talks about how excited she is to work with her students and how she loves doing it. So another area that we have representation for. Then clinical psychology. So. We have several students um, who are clinical or counseling psychologists. Um, one of my first students that I had when I came to Union is a practicing counseling psychologist who has been practicing for a really long time now in Idaho. And she has had a, an established practice and her husband decided to become a counselor afterwards. So the both of them worked together as therapists. And then, I have a student who, uh, we have a student who graduated and did clinical psychology and learned how to do neuropsychology and neuropsychology assessments and worked in the state of Utah for the VA for quite a while. And so that's another story that I feel excited about. And then finally, we have a clinical psychology graduate also who works in Ohio. And she works with people who have uh, had bariatric surgery and she works with their health and recuperation and works at the Cleveland Clinic. And I just am very proud and happy that we had a part to play in her getting to that point. Um, so we've had a few graduates who are school psychologists and uh, who work in Lincoln Public Schools and other schools in, in other states. And then one of our recent graduates is a social psychology research uh, uh, doctoral student at the University of Nebraska. Um, so I specifically think of him when I think of social psychology, but we've had other students who have gone into research areas as well. And so he's planning to actually be a professor 
a psychology professor, he's decided that he only wants to do research part time and be a psychology pre professor at probably a small college as well. So I'm very proud of these people. And this is something you could be doing as well when you graduate from uni with a psychology degree. All right. Um, I wanted to show you our website, our web page. And so I wanted to show you this because it gives you a lot of the information that I've been sharing. And it also shows you some of our graduates from the past. Now, Jordan is a therapist in California. He's still a, a therapist in California from when he was put there. But Mark graduated from our psychology program and he decided to do something totally different with our degree. So the last thing I wanted to say is that sometimes we have people who graduate from psychology and with the skills that they've developed from being in the psychology program, the writing skills, the researching skills, the knowledge that they got, the, the counseling skills that they've learned, they've decided to go to law school and become lawyers or to, become, or to develop companies or, um, to do other things that are beyond what we thought they would do, but they have gone and they've done well, become medical doctors. And so there are so many things you can learn that you can use later on from what we have. Now, of course, really what I want you to do is be a psychologist or a therapist or, or a school counselor. But what I'm saying is that psychology has so many skills that you can learn that can help you become something much bigger and um, move you on to the next level. All right, that was me doing a lot of talking. Let's see if you have any questions. I had a question. <laughs> um, so I clearly am going into psychology. Well, it may not be clear, but I have a like large interest in it. Um, and I would like to pursue with my degree um, into forensic psychology. And I was wondering if this program would be like a good, I, I'm assuming, because you cover a lot of bases, clinical, research, academia, all of those bases for psychology. And I was wondering if, you know, that would be, this program would be a good stepping stone for that. That's my question. I think I can be confidently saying yes. I think we develop all the skills and we also have a course in introductory forensic psychology that we teach every other year. And um, what we do is that we reach out to people working in the correction system, the psychologists working there. And we, so we try to get, again, somebody from the field to come in and teach that class to give you an even better idea of what it's like. And possibly a, if you if they're able to find a spot where you can work as do a practicum or something like that, then we've had a couple of people who've also done that. So, yes. Thank you for that question because <laughs> I was thinking as well, um, because I really want to do art therapy. Uh, that's something that I was only able to um, at least taste a bit of it um at another school that I was attending and so I was wondering do you guys also have like um I didn't see it I didn't really hear it but wondering if you guys have connections to um individuals and or practices that do art therapy because that's something that um it's not spoken about but it's right and, and so right now, I can't say for sure that we do because people have come in with interest and then they've changed their minds and so on. So we haven't developed a consistent relationship with an art therapy place. We, uh, a couple of times we have had people who started, you know, like I said, going in that path and we found out, you know, the things that they needed to accomplish in order to get into an art therapy program. And we started working on that and then they, they changed and went in another direction. But what I can say is that if it's something that you're really interested in and passionate about, 
we will do everything we can to connect you with people who are in that area to make sure that you have the background information that you need in order to get there. Or at least that's that's my commitment. If I take somebody in, then I'm like, okay, I will do everything I can to get all the information. And we have art here. So, you know, you can be doing the art program. And because um, in the past, the people who we've worked with, uh, they discovered that they had to have an art portfolio and so on in order to apply to those programs. And so we have the art program, we can do the art portfolio. So the, the big thing would be connecting with you with people in the field so that you can have a direct uh, source, resource for um, finding out information, maybe doing a practicum if possible, those sorts of things. And it's 120 credits to complete? 20 or 64 right now. 24, okay. So Alicia Harris has popped in with us. So she is a life coach for incoming students in um, psychology and a few other majors as well. But she's going to do a little introduction and tell you a little bit about how things work out when you get to be with her in the life coach studio. Hi, guys. Um, like Missy said, my name is Alicia, and the reason I'm on the Zoom is because um, you work with me your first um, semester of your freshman year. So I help you kind of get settled into the major. And so I'll work on scheduling for you. And I know Gracie and Lily, I have been bothering you a lot. <laughs> um, but I am the person who helps your freshman year or sometimes if we have transfer students come in as well, and they have less than 24 credits, I will be the person to help set you up and get your schedule so that you can ease into the psychology program. Um, I will have you for a semester and a few months or a few weeks. Um, and then we pass you on to the experts in psychology and they will do your scheduling from then. Um, but then I also, on top of scheduling, I also do life coaching and academic coaching. Um, so union is all about making our students succeed, which is I work in the Student Success Center. Um, so part of my job is to really make sure that you get acclimated to union's culture and you feel like you belong. And so I'm really that first kind of contact point um, person. I know enrollment is also one of your key contact persons that freshman year. Um, so we work hand in hand with enrollment and then I work very closely with the psychology department as well to do my best to make sure you get into the classes you need to get into. Um, and so you can stick to that four-year degree plan, or if you have transfer credits, um, whatever that will look like. And so that's sort of my role, um, is to support the psychology department and, and you as a student to make sure that you are um, succeeding, I guess, that that um, first year. But then also beyond that, you can utilize me obviously your freshman year, that's when you'll probably see most of me. Um, but then by the time your sophomore year comes around, um, I sort of let you fly um, and do your own thing. But I'm always here. If you need me, you can come and do academic coaching whenever you need to. You need to just sit and talk. Um, you have questions about like, you know, finances, I'm not gonna be able to answer them, but I know, you know, the people to direct you to. So I'm just sort of like a resource center. And just your support system on campus to feel like you have, you know, someone you can talk to um, our questions that you have. So yeah, that's me. Um, I've had a few students who have really appreciated having Alicia as their, yeah, even after freshman year, it's just like, yeah, I'm going to go talk to her because I think she can help me sort out. And I'm just saying that because I remember a few people Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. Thank you. Have like a fuzzy blanket and a nap spot. I've heard of people maybe hanging out and just kind of having a little moment. So Alaysha is amazing for that. Yes, I do. I have a little bit of a cozy office. Sometimes a little bit too cozy for me. Um, 
but students will come and hang out. So that's really cool. I love my job and I love what I do and just helping you guys get situated into your major and answering a lot of questions. Um, I'm just here to help and I love what I do. <laughs> All right, do you guys have any other questions tonight? No, I did put Dr. Holmes Kane's email in the um, chat as well. Do you guys want me to throw Alicia's in there too, or do you guys know how to connect with her? Let me throw it in quick, just in case. So it's pretty easy. You'll see it's like everybody's name here at Union. All right, so here comes her. So you guys can connect with her anytime. Um, but like Alicia said, she's been kind of picking on you too, trying to help you get through this process. So we're just about 60 days from the start of next school year, which is hard to believe. So anyway, we are super glad that you guys joined us tonight. Any last minute questions? Otherwise, we will sign off and let you get on with your evening. But we definitely appreciate you guys coming. I'll, like I said earlier, I'll give you that $500 scholarship. So you make sure that that's applied to your account as well. Right. And if you notice the wall behind Dr. Holmes Keynes, there is a whole wall of um, awesome alumni and there's pictures of them and a little description of what they've been doing. So uh, we love the student success area. There's a cozy fireplace back there, too. And all around here are little study areas for students to come. So you'll always find assistance. Um, and if, like Alicia said, she doesn't have the answer. She's going to point you in the right direction. All right. All right, you guys, we'll have an awesome evening and thanks for joining us.